They were great. I wouldn't say I was surprised at how great they were in Preston, but they were great, either way. Uh, Hecker 100 and the Unloving Plum, and it's time for... Now. Yeah. Midnight Mastermind. Brand new week. I mean, the scores sort of roll over. It's a continual scoring loop. Uh, on Friday... Uh, how did I do? I got a full house on Friday. Uh, the subjects last week were space security. That was very high. And uh, Chicago Bulls, monkey puzzle trees. It was a full house with the latter. But we've reset the dial, I guess, in a way. Even though if I get a full house, I'll be claiming it as a two out of three. Um, let's see who's asking the questions by saying good morning. What is your name? Dean Swain. Dean, and, and I, belie- I believe you're not on your own, Dean. That's right, I'm with James Middleton from Ooh. the Retro Asylum podcast. Oh, OK, Dean and James. You Tell me what that is in a second, but first, let me find out where in the world are you both? I'm in Hertfordshire, near Bishop Stalford. OK. And I'm in Bristol. Lovely. Uh, any, any excitement for winter? What's the one thing from each of you that excites you about the cold months coming? For myself, it's not sweating so much. <laughs> Dig that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? If you've got kids, then it's just sort of uh, like three months of uh, kids having colds in it. But I would oh. say, I would say probably mince pies on the shelves. Oh, do don't you say the c word though? Don't say the c. Please don't. No one say the c word, please. Oh. Um, uh, do you indulge in a mince pie before the first of December? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, it's been great second, having you on, guys. We'll see. You. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> um, do you then before December? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, listen, I probably have done in the past. Anyway, what are we doing? What's the subject? It's the PlayStation 2, which I know Ooh, you're a bit of a fan of. I am a fan. Uh, and remind me, what's the name of the podcast? Why are we doing this? Retro Asylum. It's the UK's number one retro gaming podcast. Oh, wow. Okay, I dig this. Uh, slick. I, I love it. <laughs> I love the idea of this. Tell me more about this in a second. I need to do some research on the PlayStation 2 which, of course, I may well have had. Uh, And then we'll do three questions on it after this. Oh, I feel like I needed more time here. I feel like I needed more time. Uh, Three questions on the PlayStation 2 is what we're doing with Dean and James from the Retro Asylum podcast. Uh, Of all the retro gaming things then, boys, uh, why this, Dean? Why did you choose this as a great subject? Uh, I've heard you mention it on the show um, when you cover during the day before, so I know yeah. you're a bit of a retro gaming fan. Well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a gaming fan full stop, but I think when you get to, to our age, and I'm sort of guessing at your age is slightly if you're the same age as me, which is 45, I feel we've, yep. we've, we've grown up with gaming. You know, my first mm. computer was a was an Amstrad CPC 464 where we used to used to load games on a tape. I mean, I tried, yeah. to, I tried to say this to one of my kids recently. They were like, what's a tape? It's like didn't go anywhere, um, and then you know, and then we, when we first went to university in places like that, we we had we had social gaming on playstations. And then now I don't see friends because I've got kids and a late night job. Now it's all about the internet. Yeah. So I just feel like it's been such a part of our lives since we were kids. It's just who we are. Yeah, well, this will definitely get you back to your roots. What's the greatest game of all time? Oh, it is a question. Um, I love Double Dragon, which is a, an old arcade game. Mm. It's not the greatest game of all time, but it's one of my favourites. What makes, what in your minds, what makes a great game? Because retro gaming, one of the problems I've always found is you go back and play them and they're just not as good as you remember them. Oh, see, I, I find that the opposite. I, I don't know, I just love them. I love the old graphics, the old sound. Um, the games can be completed fairly quickly. As someone my age, I'm 49, with two kids and a full-time job, I just don't get the time for modern gaming. So yeah. the old games, they really do suit me. Yeah, and what freaks you out nowadays with retro games is you get, like in the day, you'd have like three games, wouldn't you? And you'd swap them with friends and they'd be expensive to buy if they were on cartridges. Nowadays, you can buy preloaded ones which have got pretty much everything that's ever been released on. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty mad. It's, it's really a good time to be playing these games. Yeah. They're, they're no, easy to obtain. I agree with you. I tried to play Monkey Island again recently because it's on my phone. So I downloaded it on my phone. Did you ever play Monkey Island? I did, yep. yep. 
Yeah. And I remember playing through it the first time because I was at school and to cheat, somebody had printed out on a dot matrix printer had actually printed out a load of hints. That was the, there was no internet back then. So that's the way that people gave you tips to get through it. Anyway, boys, I've gone off on a tangent. Let me set the mood. Midnight Mastermind. And I shall now hand over radio to, to you, to Dean and James of the Retro Asylum podcast for me to attempt three questions on the PlayStation 2. My honour depends on doing well here, boys. So take it away. Ready. Right, so the first question then was uh, the PlayStation 2 featured a heavily publicised and often overhyped processor that was co-developed by Sony and Toshiba. What was the name of that processor? Ooh, I have got no idea. So let me take a guess. I'm sure I've heard it at some point. Oh, did it? Did you see it when it booted up? Was it in the boot up screen? No. no. Okay. But it was so powerful. It was supposed to make you feel... Oh, make you! Oh, that's a heavy hint. That there, is a Johnny. very it heavy is, hint. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> was it called the the motion chip? Emotion engine. Oh, well, you, listen, you're in charge. Was that well, right or wrong? You get half a point. Sure. Half a point. <laughs> yeah. Half a, I'll take half a point. We don't have a sound effect for half a point, but I'll take it. Um, like how it. powerful was it? Uh, well, it was so powerful that there were stories at the time that Saddam Hussein had been stockpiling consoles to make a supercomputer. But, yeah. Wow, that's going to take a lot of PlayStation 2s would be my guess. Yeah. Um, right, okay, half a point out of one. Let's go question two. Right, okay, the next question is Sega released its last console a year ahead of the PlayStation 2 in late 1999. What was that console called? That would be the, okay. This was the time, this was proper console wars. This is when everyone was trying to get that market. It was the Dreamcast. It was indeed, well, well done. Oh, there you go, right. Fine. Did, either, did you, either of you have a, a Dreamcast? Yes. Uh, yep, still got yeah. one, yeah. I never, I never got into the Dreamcast. Anyway, uh, final question. Right, so what PlayStation 2 snowboarding game featured music from Run DMC? I spent my entire life on this game. I still, to this day, say it's one of the greatest, most addictive games that's ever come out. Uh, my character of choice was Moby. The moves you could do were insane. I had a mate of mine who spent most of his time on his own sofa who set a high score that none of us could get within a million points of. That game is SSX Tricky. Nice. Yeah. All right. What a game that is. Have you have you played it recently? Yeah. Um, yeah I still yeah. enjoy it. Well, the third one's uh, uh, it's backwards compatible on the Xbox as well. So, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I might have to get that. I might have to get that. Do you know, a mate of mine was telling me a story about the PlayStation 2 recently, and I, you could maybe tell me if this is true or not, or I've got the wrong console. And at the time, they were going to CEX, which is the... Um, which is the big, you know, the, the the technology festival, which is in Las Vegas, where everyone announces their new products. Mm. And all the other, you know, I think Xbox had come on and all the different, you know, Nintendo had come on, all the different console makers had come on stage and they talked about the power and the, the games and what it could do. And the guy from Sony walked on stage, went $299 and walked straight back off again because it's always been a price war. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Love it, the fact when I tell a story and it's actually true and it's not made up in my brain. Uh, boys, I love that. <laughs> Two and a half out of three I'll take. Uh, just tell people about the Retro Asylum podcast. Where can people find it? What can they hear when they listen in? Uh, you can find it pretty much anywhere, anywhere you download your podcast, even the smart speaker if you ask to uh, play Retro Asylum. It's all about video gaming from the late 70s up until really the early 2000s. I love it. I'm going to tune in. Um, thank you so much, boys. Thank you for taking the time. No thank worries. You. Thank you for thank having you. us on. Uh, and I've, I've just seen the, the track that Sophie's put in. No, I like this. Uh, there you go. Two and a half out of three on retro gaming. Well, on the PlayStation 2 from the Retro Asylum podcast. I'll take that two and a half out of three. And look what it is. 